This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So in this part we are dealing with the fifth chapter in physics of class 11. The topic is laws of motion. Okay? So basically in the previous chapter our main concern was to describe the motion of a particle in space quantitatively so there we saw about the different kinds of motion uniform motion needs the concept of velocity alone whereas non uniform motion it requires the concept of acceleration so these things we already studied in our previous chapter so here the basic question which comes to our mind is what governs the motion of bodies so in order to find answer for that question we are dealing with this chapter so what governs the motion of bodies so in this chapter we are seeing various concepts the first one is introduction and aristotle's fallacy the law of inertia the newton's first law of motion newton's second law of motion newton's third law of motion so the very basic laws of newton's uh, of motion and conservation of momentum equilibrium of a particle common forces in mechanics circular motion solving problems in mechanics so we are going to deal with all these concepts in this particular chapter of law of motion okay so now uh, we shall see the first part that is the introduction part see as i told you in this particular chapter we are dealing with the concept that is uh, which what governs the motion of bodies so let us first guess the answer based on on a common experience in our day to day life we see all these examples for example uh, to move a football at rest someone must kick it isn't it if you want to move a football which is in rest someone must kick it then only it moves forward isn't it similarly to throw a stone upwards one has to give it an upward push okay to throw a stone upward someone must push it in the upward direction isn't it a breeze causes the branches of a tree to swing the breeze it causes the branches of the tree to swing a strong wind can even more heavy even move heavy objects a boat moves in a flowing river without anyone drawing it clearly some external agency is needed to provide force to move a body from rest isn't it so from all these example one thing is very much clear that an external force is very much required to move a body from rest okay so likewise an external force is also needed to retard or stop motion so not only to move the body from rest again to bring back the body to rest we need this external force in both the cases we need this external force so you can stop a ball rolling down an inclined plane by applying a force against the direction of its motion isn't it so here also external force is required to stop the motion or to uh, bring back the object from motion to rest so in these examples one thing is clear the external agency of force is in contact with the object 
so for example in football in the first example this football and kick so this football as well as the kick both are in contact isn't it when a man kicks the football it moves forward so both are in contact so when we throw a stone upward the stone and the hand will be in contact and here the breeze and the tree will be in the contact so it's always not required that the two objects must be in contact for example in some of the cases like a stone which is released from the top of a building it accelerates downwards due to the gravitational pull of the earth in this case there is no contact with the object and even a, when a bar magnet attracts an iron nail from a dist from a distance here also there is no contact with the object so this shows that external agencies for example like gravitational and magnetic forces these forces they can exert force on a body even from a distance it is not always required to be in contact with the object so these external agencies can exert force on a body even from certain distance so in you know short we can say one thing that force is required to put a stationary body in motion or stop a moving body okay force is needed to put a stationary body in motion okay or even the force is needed to stop a moving body so in both of you know cases force is required the external agency may or may not be in contact with the body so this is an introduction part so now let us study the aristotle's fallacy the second part the greek thinker aristotle held the view that if a body is moving something external is required to keep it moving so this was the statement which is given by a greek thinker called aristotle okay something external is always required to keep it moving so according to this view for example you just consider an arrow which is shot from a bow keeps flying since air behind the arrow keeps pushing it so the arrow when it is shot from a bow so it keeps moving until the air behind that arrow it pushes it okay and the view was part of an elaborate framework of ideas which was developed by aristotle on the motion of bodies in the universe see most of this aristotle's ideas on motion are known to be wrong and need not concern us okay most of the theories or the concepts which are developed by this aristotle's are proved to be wrong okay basically he said that or an aristotle law of motion may be phrased as an external force is required to keep a body in motion so we can phrase the aristotle law as an external force 
is required to keep a body in motion. So this was the statement which is given by Aristotle. So this as I told you Aristotle's law of motions were proved to be wrong. So however it is a natural view that anyone would hold from common experience. For example a small child who is playing with a simple toy car on the floor he knows intuitively that it needs to constantly drag the string attached to the toy with some force to keep it going isn't it even that small child knows whenever a string is tied to the toy the child will you know he'll drag the string to move the toy if it releases the string it comes to rest so this experience is common to most of the terrestrial motion. External forces seem to be needed to keep bodies in motion. Left to themselves, all bodies eventually come to rest. So what was the flaw in this Aristotle's fallacy or in this Aristotle's theory? Yes, the answer is a moving toy car. Again, the, we are taking the same example. In case of a moving toy car. So a moving toy car comes to rest because the external force of friction on the car by the floor opposes its motion. So that moving toy car it comes to rest because of the frictional force which is acting on it in the opposite direction. Okay, Because of the frictional direction on the car by the floor in the opposite direction which it opposes its motion. So only the toy will come to rest. So to counter this force the child has to apply an external force on the car in the direction of motion. So in order to counter this frictional force in the reverse direction the child must apply the external force to move the toy so when the car is in uniform motion so you just think that the car is in uniform motion okay at that time there is no net external force acting on it the force by the child cancels the force by the flow so in that case whatever the force which is applied by the child it cancels the frictional force which is applied by the floor on the toy car. So the corollary is if there were no friction the child would not have, be, have been required to apply any force to keep the toy car in uniform motion. So since there is a frictional force an external force is needed. So if there is no frictional force then the child so there is no need for that child to apply the external force to move the toy car. Okay. The opposing forces such as uh, friction and viscous forces are always present in the natural world. Okay, the opposite forces such as uh, viscous and friction forces are always present in the natural world. So this explains why forces by external agencies are necessary to overcome the frictional forces to keep bodies in motion, isn't it? So we require external forces in order to overcome this frictional force. So now we understand where this Aristotle went wrong, isn't it? So basically his idea was like whatever if the body is moving something external is required to keep it moving. But in case of uniform motion as we just explained the case of a toy car the, there is no forces required by the child if the frictional force on the car is not acting. Okay, if there is no frictional force on the car, then there is no need of external force by the child on the car. 
okay so this was the basic idea which is given by the aristotle and it is also proved to be wrong in the next part we'll study what is the law of inertia